friends this is sayam and i am back with a new chapter transportation in organisms before getting started let me give you an example one day two friends ram and sham were playing ram fell and a red liquid oozed out of his knee sham told him that it was blood ram got curious he asked what is blood sham answered blood is a fluid which flows in a blood vessels it has various kinds of cells suspended in it components of blood blood has two components blood particles which are the cells and plasma there are three types of cells rbcs or red blood cells transport oxygen from lungs to tissues wbcs or white blood cells protect us from infections by producing antibodies blood platelets or thrombocytes help in blood clotting the fluid part of blood is known as plasma electrolytes for example nacl proteins for example fibrogen and carbohydrates for... now we know what blood is so let's learn about the vessels in which blood flows there are two types of blood vessels arteries and veins arteries carry oxygen rich blood while veins carry carbon dioxide rich blood arteries carry blood from the heart to all the parts of the body while veins carry blood from all the parts of the body to the heart in arteries the pressure is high while in veins the pressure is low arteries have thick elastic walls while veins have thin walls arteries are situated deep under the skin while veins are situated just below the skin now there is a special type of artery and vein the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein the difference is that they perform the opposite functions the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood while the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood the pulmonary artery carries blood from the heart to lungs while the pulmonary vein carries blood from the lungs to the heart we know about blood and that it flows in our blood vessels but how is blood pumped in the blood vessels well here is where the heart comes in the heart is a muscular organ which pumps blood in our entire body it has four chambers the right atrium right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle the right right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from vena cava the right ventricle pumps deoxygenated blood into the lungs through the pulmonary artery the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through pulmonary vein left ventricle pumps blood into the entire body through aorta in the previous map you must have come across the words vena cava and aorta let us learn what are they vena cava is a vein there are two types of vena cava superior and inferior the vein which carries deoxygenated blood from the upper body is called the superior vena cava and the vein which carries deoxygenated blood from the lower body is called the inferior vena cava now let's learn about the aorta aorta is the largest artery and heart pumps blood into the aorta it distributes oxygen rich blood into the entire body through a systemic circulation and to do so it splits into two arteries which divide into further now there are four valves present in our heart to avoid mixing of oxygen rich blood and carbon dioxide rich blood let us learn about them the tricuspid valve is between right ventricle and right atrium the pulmonary valve is between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery the bicuspid or mitral valve is between the left atrium and left ventricle the aortic valve is between the left ventricle and aorta now here is a well labeled diagram 
to help you learn better it has all the chambers of the heart and the aorta the four valves the vena cava and the pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery blood blood vessels and the heart form the circulatory system which transports various things like oxygen carbon dioxide wastes etc let us learn about the circulation of blood circulation of blood here is a well labeled diagram to help you learn about the circulation of blood from the heart pumps the blood into an artery and on reaching the tissues the artery is divided into extremely thin tubes called capillaries the capillaries join up to form veins the vein bring the blood back to the heart it is pumped into the pulmonary artery for removal of carbon dioxide by the lungs and the pulmonary vein brings the oxygenated blood back to the heart and the cycle goes on now here are some new terms for you pulse the throbbing felt in the wrist or neck due to the blood flowing in arteries is known as pulse pulse rate the number of times the pulse beats per minute is called the pulse rate on an average it beats 72 to 80 times in a minute heart beat the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles or the walls of the heart of chambers is known as heart beat now there is a relation between the pulse and heart beat the pulse rate per minute indicates the rate of heart beat and each heart beat generates one pulse in the artery here is a fact for you all the instrument used to feel a person's heart beat is called a stethoscope blood of different people has different characteristics blood is characterized on the basic basis of two following factors blood group and rh factor types of blood groups there are four types of blood groups let us learn about them in a little detail blood group a can be donated to any person having the blood group a or ab and it can be received from a person having blood group a or o blood group b can be donated to a person with blood group b or ab and can be received from a person having b or o a person having ab blood group can donate a person uh, to a person having ab blood group and can receive from all groups a person having o can donate to all groups but he can only receive from a person having o, o group you must have seen that the blood group o can donate to all persons this means that it is a universal donor while the blood group ab can only be can Uh, be received from all persons this means it is a universal recipient now let us learn about the removal of wastes from a body this process is known as excretion excretory products in different organisms humans humans have two major excretory products sweat and urine sweat extra water and salts are removed as sweat sweating also helps to cool our body urine urine contains 95% water 2.5% urea and 2.5% other waste products fish fish excrete cell waste as ammonia which directly dissolves in water land animals birds lizards snakes excrete a semi solid compound known as uric acid now let us learn about the human excretory system in little detail organs involved in excretion form this system these organs are two kidneys the blood capillaries in nephrons the which are the kidney cells filter the blood when the blood reaches the two kidneys it has both useful and harmful substances the useful substances are absorbed back in the blood while the harmful substances dissolve in water and are removed as urine from the kidneys 
the urine passes into the ureters which are tube like structures and is stored in the urinary bladder urine is passed through the urinary opening at the end of a muscular tube called urethra we know about transport of substances in humans let us learn about how this process takes place in plants plants have vascular tissue for transport of substances let us learn about it with the help of the map uh, the next map vascular tissue there are two types of vascular tissue in plants xylem and phloem xylem transports water and minerals upwards from the roots while the phloem transports food synthesized by leaves to all the parts of the plant you you can see the diagram and learn better now let us check how much you have learned with the help of a small test your first question is what is the chief excretory product in humans your second question is which is the largest artery your third question is what are the two types of vascular tissue in plants your last question is what are the cells of kidneys called if you cannot get the answer on this question do not panic see the video again and i'm sure you will get it if you still have a doubt feel free to ask me subscribe to my channel for more videos.